Hello everyone. Welcome to Brilliant Bankers. In today's session, we will be discussing about the funding and the regulatory aspects of RBI, which is about how the RBI controls the liquidity in the market, its functions as the lender of last resort, and also the payment and settlement system in the banking system in India. We will be going about a brief discussion about the payments and settlement systems in the banking system in India also. So what does RBI do to regulate the money or how does it do its funding? For funding, as you all know, RBI is a note issuing authority in India. That is a currency in circulation is directly being controlled by the RBI. However, the currency is only the cash component of the money in circulation and in that it is only a small part of the total economy. So current cash is only a small part of the economy that is in circulation or the currency that is in circulation, which is being deposited in banks and then further lend out as loans, which in another way comes in as a deposit and being lent out as a loan. For example, let's take the case of Mr. A, wherein he comes to a bank with an amount of rupees 1 crore and he asks that or he wants to deposit that amount. In a day or two, Mr. B approaches the bank in request of a loan of rupees 75 lakh for his business purposes. So bank, after all their processes, they go. Um, uh, they decide to lend the amount of rupees seventy five lakh. So what are, what has already happened is one crore has come in as a deposit for which the bank is going to pay the interest to the customer, and now Mr B has is taking a loan of seventy five lakh for which B will be paying the interest to the bank. B on his business purposes pays the amount to Mr C, and now Mr C approaches the bank with rupees 50 lakh in his hand for a new deposit. So the base value which was only 1 crore has changed into 2.25 crores. So this is called a money multiplier effect which happens in the bank. So the cash or the currency part is a small area but the money multiplies in the bank wherein we, which is not even printed. So this is called a money multiplier effect and the currency that is being circulated or the money that is being circulated wherein it is not the currency or the cash but it is a money on a whole that is being circulated it is called as a broad money which includes the currency in circulation and also the time and demand deposits that are available in the banks and the post offices the monetary policy that is being brought out by the rbi is mainly aimed in controlling the inflation and ensuring the stability of the financial markets so that the purpose of the RBI has is to exercise control over the currency or the money circulation and reduce the money multiplying effect due to which there is a very big problem called the inflation as and when there is a money multiplication each and every person will be having a lot of money for the purpose of rotation he doesn't have any cash in his hand, but there is some kind of rotation that is happening. He automatically goes for a purchase of some kind of thing where uh, demand is increased due to which the price rises. So automatically the RBI has a control over the currency or and reduce the money multiplier effect. Wherein the RBI has instructed the banks to comply with certain requirements like that of the CRR, there is a cash reserve ratio and the SLR, the statutory liquidity ratio by depositing cash in RBI and by investing in the government and or the approved securities both in the government securities and some approved securities by the RBI respectively. So let's see what the CRR and SLR means. CRR the cash reserve ratio it has been defined under section 42 1 of the RBI Act and section 18 one of the BR Act wherein CRR is defined as it is the amount of fund that all the SEBs that is the scheduled commercial banks are required to maintain with the 
RBI. So, CRR is the share of the bank's total deposit that is mandated by the RBI to be maintained with the RBI as reserves in the form of liquid cash. So, in this condition, all the banks are to maintain a certain sum of money as liquid cash with RBI. On the current date, the CRR that is as per the RBI is 4.5% which has been uh, decided in the monetary policy of the CA. So how does the cash reserve ratio work? When the RBI decides to increase this cash reserve ratio, the amount of money that is available with the bank reduces. This is the RBI's way of controlling the excess flow of money into the economy. So when the cash in the bank reduces, automatically the loans are, are reduced. The interest rate of deposits are reduced, where, wherein the cash flow towards the economy is being reduced. Here the cash balance that is to be maintained by the scheduled banks with the RBA should not be less than the 4.5% of the total net demand and time liabilities. Which is the which is done on a fortnightly basis. The check for the NDTL is done on a fortnightly basis. The NDTL that refers to the total demand and the time liabilities that are held by the banks. It includes the deposits of the general public and the balances that is held by the banks with other banks also. So, what is net demand and time liabilities? This is the total deposit that is held by the public in a bank and the same bank holding a deposit in an other bank. So demand deposits consist of all the liabilities which the bank needs to pay on demand like that of the current deposits, the demand drafts, the balances in the fixed deposits or the fixed deposits that have been matured and also demand liabilities portion of the savings bank account. It can be withdrawn at any time. So time deposits consist of the deposits that need to be repaid on the maturity and where the depositor can't withdraw the money immediately and where the where he can also reinvest the same. Instead, he is required to wait for a certain period to gain the access to the funds because of the maturity period. This includes the fixed deposits, the time level liabilities, of the SBA deposits also and the staff security deposits that are being made. The liabilities of the bank include the call money market, borrowings, certificates of deposits and the investment in deposits in the other banks. In short, the higher the cash reserve ratio, the lesser is the amount of money available for, to the banks for lending and investing. In this case, the CRR is one of the main components of the RBS monetary policy which is used to regulate the money supply, the level of in inflation and also the liquidity in the country. The higher the CRR, the lower is the liquidity with the banks and whenever it is lower, the liquidity is always higher. So higher the CRR, the lower the liquidity and the vice versa. Vice versa. During the high levels of inflation attempts are always made to reduce the flow of the money in the economy. So this is what the RBA does whenever there is a hike in inflation rate. So how does the CRR affect the economy? How does the cash reserve ratio affect the economy? In this case, the RBA increases the CRR lowering the loanable funds available to the banks. So in turn, it slows down the investment also and reduces the supply of money in the economy, which as a result or wherein the growth of the economy is negatively impacted. However, this also helps bringing down the inflation. But on the other hand, when the RB wants to pump funds into the system, it lowers the CR, which increases the funds or the funds loanable funds available with the banks. The bank in turn sanction large number of loans to businesses and the industry for different investment purposes also. It also increases the overall supply of money in the economy. This ultimately boosts the 
growth rate of the economy so this is how the crr works and this is how the rbi regulates the crr and this is the main reason for regulating the crr so what is an slr the statutory liquidity ratio this is the minimum percentage of deposits that a commercial banks maintain through gold cash and other securities this is the liquid fund that should be available with the bank however these deposits are maintained by the banks themselves and not deposited at the rbi so in this case the banks they should have in a liquid state at any time let it be gold let it be cash or the other securities that is the government securities or the approved securities by the rbi in their hand and this is always maintained at the banks themselves and on date the current uh, slr that is being maintained in india is 18% how does the uh, slr work in this condition every bank having a particular portion of their nddl in the form of the cash gold and other liquid assets by the end of the day the ratio of these liquid assets to the demand and time liabilities is called the statutory liquidity ratio the reserve bank has authority to increase this ratio up to 40% wherein on date it is 18% only and uh, an increase in the ratio constricts the ability of the bank to inject more money into the account rbi is also responsible for regulating the flow of the money and the stability of the prices to run the economy statutory liquidity ratio is one of the many monetary policies for controlling the inflation again so slr among other tools is instrumental in ensuring the solvency of the banks and cash cash flow in the economy how does it help in the solvency of the bank so if there is any closure of any deposits in premature case or any any other condition or, or on maturity if in case the bank is not having any fund how is it going to clear those deposits so for that there should be liquid fund available in the banks at all time and whenever the slr is increased which is currently 18% if it is increased to 40% again what happens is the bank should hold that amount of its total deposits with it so out of 100% when 40% is being held with that only 60% can be given back to the market or on or as loans due to which the cash flow has been reduced so this is how the crr and slr helps in reducing the inflation and helps in controlling the economy of the country so what happens if the slr is not maintained if in in india every bank such as a scheduled commercial bank state cooperative bank or cooperative central banks and the primary cooperative banks all are maintained all have to maintain the slr as per the rbi guidelines for computation and the maintenance of the slr banks have to report their latest nddl to the rbi every fortnight that is on a friday every fridays fortnightly basis if any commercial bank fails to maintain the slr in that condition the rbi levies a 3% per penalty annually over the bank rate and on if the defaulting happens on the next working day also it will increase to 5% fine this ensures that commercial banks do not fail to have ready cash available when the customers demand them so this is the main reason for maintaining the slr whenever the customer demands for a money or for their deposit or on the closure of the deposit they have it always in their hands so coming to what are the components of this nddl we have been telling the word nddl the net demand and time liabilities so what are the components of the nddl nddl can be divided into two parts there is a demand liability and a time liability now let's go into the demand liability table 
components of a demand liability are the current deposits the demand liabilities portion of the savings bank account the margins that are held against the letter of credits and the guarantees the balances in the overdue of the fixed deposits cash certificates and the cumulative and the recurring deposits that is a term deposits if there is any outstanding telegraphic transfers or the mail transfers any unclaimed deposits come under the demand liabilities and all deposits held as security for advances which are payable on demand so anything that has been on a term period or as a savings bank account or any cash in a savings bank account or anything that has been put out as a letter of guarantee or letter of credit all comes under the demand liabilities so what is a time liability time liability of the bank shall include those liabilities which are payable otherwise than on demand and they include the fixed deposits that is it again the term deposits these are paid only after the completion or the maturity of the term that is the fixed deposits the cash certificates the cumulative and the recurring deposits the closure period of the the amount in an sb when whenever it is going for a closure if there is any security deposit from the staff any margin that has been held against that of the letter of credit so all these things the demand liabilities and time li liabilities are almost similar but the time level liabilities come in the condition only when there is a maturity of all those deposits and demand liabilities are wherever there is a kind of payment that is to be done for in case if, if in a deposit there is a monthly or a quarterly interest payment to be done in that condition it becomes a demand liability for the interest portion of that deposit but not for the principal portion of the deposit so coming to the next topic that is a liquidity adjustment facility so what is a liquidity adjustment facility it is a principal operating system of the monetary policy it is a mon monetary policy tool that is being used by the reserve bank of india to ma ma manage the short term liquidity in the banking system it is designed to help banks maintain an appropriate level of liquidity and to control the money supply in the economy the liquidity adjustment facility consists of two components mainly that is a repo rate and the reverse repo rate which we have been learn learned a lot being a banker we all know what is a repo rate and what is a reverse repo so let's have a, cl a clarity on the same again the repo rate the term repo as defined stands for the repurchase agreement in a repo transaction the rbi buys the government securities from the bank with an agreement to sell them back at a future date banks use these transactions to borrow money from the central bank so the repo rate is the interest rate at which the rbi lends money to the commercial banks against the collateral of the government securities if the rbi wants to absorb liquidity from the system it increases the repo rate making it more expensive for the banks to borrow money from the rbi so we can say it as the rate of interest at which rbi lends money to the commercial banks so whenever the repo rate increases it becomes difficult for the banks it doesn't become difficult for the bank but there is a thing that whenever the interest increases the loan decreases so automatically whenever the repo rate increases normally the lending lending rate also increases and here the banks have to pay more interest to the reserve bank of india on date the repo rate stands at 6.5% so what is the reverse repo rate this is the opposite of the repo rate in a reverse repo transaction the rbi borrows money from the banks by selling government securities to them or it can be sell told as it is the acceptance of the surplus from the banking sector whenever there is a surplus in the bank sector 
the rba accepts it this is this can it can be also defined as the acceptance of the surplus or the borrowing of borrowing from the banking system the reverse repo rate is the interest rate at which the rba borrows money from the commercial banks if the rba wants to inject liquidity into the system it decreases the reverse repo rate encouraging banks to lend more money to the central bank which stands at the 3.35 percentage on it. so banks can participate in the laf auctions that is the liquidity adjustment facility auctions that are conducted by the rba to manage the short term liquidity needs of the banks and the condition is that the auctions are for a minimum amount of rupees 5 crore and it's always in the multiples of that amount so by adjusting the repo and the re reverse repo rate the rba can signal its monetary policy stance for example whenever there is an increase in the repo rate it can be a measure to control the inflation by reducing the money supply while decreasing it can stimulate economic activity by making the borrowing cheaper the laf therefore provides a mechanism for the rba to regulate the liquidity in the financial system and achieve its monetary policy so coming to the same condition what we have uh, learned in the previous slide the crr the slr and now the laf all are used for the control of the currency or the money in the market to control the monetary system and as per the monetary policy so there are two types of repos one is called the overnight repo and the other is a varied rate repo so what is an overnight repo it is a liquidity that is being provided by the rbi at the laf repo rate in this type of repo the rbi fixes a fixed repo rate at which it is willing to lend to the banks and banks can borrow as much as they need at that rate the rbi commits to providing funds to the full amount demanded by the banks hence the term is also called full allotment that is for a overnight period this type of repo is used to meet the liquidity needs of the banks there is also something called the variable rate repo in this kind the rbi does not fix the repo rate instead it allows the banks to bid for the funds at the rate they are willing to pay in this condition the uh, rate there is a fluctuation the rbi then decides the cut off rate and all successful bidders should pay this rate this type of repo allows for more flexibility in determining the cost of the funds for the banks coming to the final topic that is the payment and the settlement systems in india payment and settlement systems play a vital role in the development of the financial market the important reforms relevant to the treasury operations in the case of the payment and settlement systems are that the payments that refer to the interbank payments as also payments on the behalf of the customers so payment refers to the interbank payment in this condition in the payment and settlement system all the payments the word payment refers to the interbank payment of the customers that is the payment from one bank to the other and the settlement the word settlement refers to the payment or receipts in the exchange of the securities or the foreign exchange conventionally the interbank payments have been handled by net settlement through the clearing houses nowadays it is being carried out through the clearing houses through the net payment system that is whenever in batches earlier the same used to take 1 to 3 days or even longer if the payments were out of station kind also having a probability of a counterparty risk and also the expensive delays in the check collection that is if there uh, if there is a problem in the collection of the check that is the signature is mismatched the check used to go and come back after 15 days the person who has deposited in his account 
he will be waiting for those 15 days for check to go to that branch get it cleared and then come back he, he will be getting the news that his check, uh, check has been bounced and it's al- almost 15 days so there was a delay also where the person was also losing his interest and this also there was also an operational cost of handling the paper based check clearing which was high due to the postal charges that used to be there nowadays this has changed into the internet banking system and you you, you do have new developments like that of the rtgs the negotiated dealing system the foreign exchange clear system the deposit institutions that help you out in payment and settlement systems the net and the online payments so let's go on these topics on a brief note the developments in the sector are initially with the rtgs the real time gross settlement where an rtgs is an electronic fund transfer system that enables the real time one to one fund transfer between banks on a gross basis it ensures the, that the transactions are settled individually without bundling or netting with any other transactions usually the rtgs is typically used for high value transactions minimum of rupees 2 lakh in amount wherein the transfer of funds needs to be instantaneous and irrevocable it is commonly employed for a large value interbank transfers and also customer transactions what is a negotiated dealing system the negotiated dealing system is an electronic platform used for trading in the government securities and other money market instruments in it also facilitates the secondary market trading of the government securities it is used the nds provides a transparent and efficient platform for market participants that is including the banks and the financial institutions and also the primary dealers to buy and sell the government securities what is an fx clear or the foreign exchange clear it is a platform for clearing and settlement of the over the counter foreign exchange derivatives in india which is being operated by the ccil that is the clearing corporation of india so it is a over the counter foreign exchange settlement process the fx clear plays a cru- crucial role in mitigating the counterparty credit risk in the forex derivative market it also ensures that the safety and the efficiency of the clearing and settlement processes for these instruments the deposit institutions in india like that of the nsdl and the csdl provide dep- deposit services for securities they even hold the securities in electronic form that is in a dmat form and enable electronic settlement of the trades in the stock market these institutions help in dematerializing electronic trading and also safe keeping of the securities reducing the need for any physical share certificates coming to a final topic the nift or the national electronic fund transfer it is an electronic fund transfer system that operates on a deferred net settlement basis it facilitates fund transfer between banks across the country all throughout the 24 hours in a half an hour netting basis nift is commonly used for the retail transactions in, including the individual and corporate fund transfers so transactions are processed in batches and settlement occurs at set intervals of every 30 minutes so these systems and institutions collectively contribute to the efficiency transparency and the safety of various financial transactions covering such an security trading fund transfer and also the foreign exchange each serves as a specific purpose within the broader financial infrastructure of our country that is india so with that we have come to the end of today's session and we have discussed about the different types of funding and regulatory aspects of rbi and the different payment and settlement systems in the country if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them in the comment section your feedback is very invaluable to us do not forget to like share and subscribe our channel the brilliant bankers until next time
दिस इज निशंत साइनिंग ऑफ जय हिंद